He is our help. Hallelujah. A very present help in the time of need. Anybody ever been in need of, or been in trouble and know that the Lord has come to our rescue? Hallelujah. Come on, just lift up your voice this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We honor you with the fruit of our lips. Hallelujah, God, we lift you up and we magnify you. We make your name great. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous can run therein and be safe. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, get a little loud this morning. It's okay. Come on, get a little louder. Get a little louder. Get a little louder this morning. Oh the Bible says to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. The word did not say to whisper, but he said to shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No matter what you've been through on this week, no matter what you're going through with your children, no matter what you're going through in your marriage, no matter what you're going through in your body, I guarantee you that God is mindful of you this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on and lift up the name of the Lord this morning. Come on and lift his name up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, rest in this place on today. Hallelujah. Let him be your strength. Let him be your strong tower this morning. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on, let the Richter scale get a little higher this morning. Come on, this is your opportunity. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we lift you high. We lift you high. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Come on, tell the Lord. Oh, God, we worship you this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Whatever the Lord has given you through your spirit, man. Come on and just shout it out on today. Oh, hallelujah, we press into your presence. For in your presence, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I am, Father. Hallelujah, when I can't feel strength, hallelujah. God, I pray that you would encourage me to press in to your presence, Father. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. God, let us feel your peace on today. We lift you up in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. We open up our mouths and we bless you on this morning, Father. We praise you and we thank you. We extol you and we exalt you. We lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now on the count of three, we're just going to give out a great big loud shout unto the Lord. One, two, three. Come on and shout unto the Lord. Come on, shout unto the Lord. Come on, just as an act of obedience. Hallelujah. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Come on, one more time. One, two, three. Shout unto the Lord. Shout unto the Lord. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray that you feel the burden lifting up off of your shoulders. That you have the liberty and the freedom to worship your king and your God. Amen. So we're right there. So stay right there, amen? And once we stay right there, we're going to begin to go higher and higher, amen? Glory to your name. Above every name, our God reigns. 
my God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion and authority. You reign. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion authority. You reign. Oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign above every name. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name, with power, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. With power and majesty, with power and majesty, dominion, authority, you reign. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name, oh, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name, with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion so and authority. You reign. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion so and authority. You reign.
a chance over my circumstance. Giving me another chance. Giving me another chance. Giving me another chance. Hallelujah. The highest in praise. Giving me another chance. I wonder you know who still reigns. They're not talking about the rain that we've been having a couple of days ago. Do you know what he still reigns is talking about? God still reigns. He looks over us. He watches over us. Nobody can do us like Jesus. He reigns. So no matter what your circumstances might be today, tomorrow, the next day, just look at the circumstances and speak life. God still reigns. God still reigns. Know that in your heart. Children, learn that. When somebody say you are nothing or you can't be anything, you know my God still reigns because my God is over you. So let's learn to speak to the enemy, to let him know God still reigns. Don't let his death be in vain. Jesus died for all of us. Know that Jesus still reigns. Now let us go before the throne of grace. Our wise and eternal God, this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. For God, I am so thankful that you looked beyond my thoughts and you saw my needs, and the greater one lives inside of me. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that leads and guides me into all truth. When I want to do wrong, God, your Holy Spirit will convict me, will chasten me, and let me know, "Uh uh-uh, daughter, that's not the right way. Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, how excellent is thy name. For we know, God, your name is above every name, that at the mention of your name, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess. And that's just not a word, that's a written word in your Bible, that's a promise that we will bow, we will bow before you. Lord, we thank you for our pastor and first lady who are so diligent in their service for you first and then for us, you life members. Lord, we ask you now to look upon the Marie families. There are so many that are going through, not only in Danville, but all over the world. Every time you pick up the paper or listen to the news, somebody has died. And Lord, we know there's so many hearts that are hurting. But God, we know that we can call on you if we can't call on anybody else. And we know that you hear and you answer prayers. It may not be in the way we want, but your word said all things work together for the good for those who love them and are called according to their purpose. So we know that in our calling, there'll be trials and tribulations. There'll be testing. There'll be times that we said, I can't go on. But we got to stop and read your word. Study to show thyself approved. Rightly divide in your word the truth. Lord, teach us. Teach us to know that it's all about you and not about us. Let our light so shine so that men may see you and not us and glorify you. Lord, I thank you so much for what you've done in my life, for what you've done in my family's life, what you've done in my friend's life, what you've done in each one of our lives. If we just stop and think how good you've been to us, We have done so much that you should turn your back on us, but you didn't. 
God, you allowed your son to die on the cross for us, for our sins. Oh, and some of them were so ugly, but you've forgiven us. Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. And as we go to the service, Lord, let us leave with something in our heart that we'll know that it was about you and not about us. Let us love on one another. Let us forgive one another. Let us be on one accord. This I pray in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. For you are reigning over us. In Jesus' name, amen. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
Lord, you are my way maker. You are my miracle worker. You are my promise keeper. You are my light in the darkness. Come on, everybody with the praise team. Everybody all over the room. Everybody. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the dark. Make it personal. Mine, you're mine. I don't know about anybody else, but I can tell you for myself. I can tell you. You made a way. You opened doors. You saved my soul. You healed my body. You made a way out of no way. You delivered me. You brought me back. You restored me. You encouraged me. You lifted me. You showed me. You revealed to me. You brought me. Hallelujah. That is who you are. Everybody, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, clap those hands. Thank you. Come on, open your mouth. Say thank you. Come on, thank you. You fill the blank in. Thank you. Thank you. Healing me. Thank you. For my family. Thank you. For the clothes on my back. Thank you. For the roof over my head. Thank you. For my children, grandchildren. Thank you. For my job. Thank you. Oh, for my wife, my husband, my mom, my dad. Thank you. For my brothers, my sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Burden bearer. Thank you. Even when I don't feel you, you're working. Even when I don't see you, you're working. He's working. You never stop. You never stop Come on. You never stop. You never stop. Come on, tell him you never stop. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Thank you for working right now. Thank you for holding back the enemy right now. Thank you. You never stop. My heart that beats. You never stop. You never stop working. Keep on doing great things. Hallelujah. You never stop. Hey. Oh, 
everyone. Come on, join the praise team. You, you never, never stop. stop. You, you never, never stop working. You never stop you working. Never stop. Come on, let that you go never deep. Stop Come on, working. he's working right now. You never Ever since stop. you got into you the world, the Lord working. has been working. You never Every day, stop. food. You never Every day, clothes, working. shelter. Every day, you every day, stop. air to breathe. Every day, every day. So, Father, let us be more oh, you never conscious stop healing. that you never stop working. You're working right now. You never stop You're delivering. Working. You're working. Oh, let everybody Jesus. be receptive. Let everybody be willing to give you more space in their hearts today. Let everybody here be willing to consider the message that you have given me to share with your people. Let everybody be conscious. We be it, ah, we rebuke the devil right now. Every lion spirit, every spirit of distractions, every spirit that is not the Holy Ghost, we banish you from this place. We give you no rights and no privileges, no voice, no permission. Only you, Holy Spirit. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, welcome the Holy Ghost. Come on, open your mouth. Welcome, Spirit of the Living God. Right now, right now, you never stop. Move in this service. Move on me today. Move on our hearts today. Pull back the blinders. Pull back the lion spirit. Move it, move it today. For your glory, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on, somebody shout glory. Oh, no, come on. Really, really give him a thunder. Glory. Hallelujah. Lifted hands. Not for me. Everybody got hands. Come on. Say it. Come on, worship. We talking to God. Don't have nothing to do with your neighbor. It's everything with you here for worship. We're here to worship you, Lord. You are our way maker. And you are the miracle worker. You're the God that cannot lie. Your light shines. And darkness is abolished. Hallelujah. Come on, be seated. Be seated. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. Come on, let's thank God for the praise team. Thank God for the band today. Come on, for our first lady today. Thank God. You here, you a visitor, you never been here on a Sunday morning. Just stand so we can just honor you. We're not going to do anything else to you. We just want to let you know you're welcome here. Is there anybody? Come on, God bless you. God bless you. God bless all of y'all. Y'all are welcome. Y'all are welcome, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Is there anybody here <laughs> that really want to know why you're here? I didn't see any hands. I guess all y'all don't care. Let's see. Okay. Sister Miller says she wants to know. You know, I'm going to always want you to participate in the message. I don't want you to sit here while I'm preaching and fool me. How can you fool me? You are not in the room. You're already into Monday. You're already waiting on the chicken. You, you. Somebody said, and yesterday is gone. Somebody said, don't go back to Saturday. It's over right now. How many want to know? How many want to know? There's a few more of y'all want to know. I'm glad you want to know. Because how many would agree that it's really 
the most important thing to know why you here. Okay? Now, come on, we're going to pull it up. We're going to move you along. We're going to try our best, amen, to get you down this road. God's will. You must know your what? Your true identity. You, you must know that. Because if you don't really know your true identity, you cannot really function as you should. You really can't obtain you really can't experience. And so, as much as we go to church, some of us might be still, some of us don't know our true identity. Even though we go to church. And, you know, God wants us to know that. Amen? God wants us to know our true identity. Because your true identity is not your car. Your true identity is not the house. Your true identity is not your PhD. Your, your, your true identity is not where you live or where you've been or where you're going. Your true identity comes from God. Amen? Amen? How many want to know your true identity? Please stay in the room. I know it's easy to, you know, move. So that's why I'm always uh, asking for audience participation. So I know you're still in the room. Amen? You're still in the room. Come on, shout glory. Come on, you're still in the room. Shout hallelujah. Now, this is not going to ask you to, uh, you know, say anything, but at least lift your hand if you really want to know your true identity. Amen. I'm telling y'all the reason that this guy is before you is my desire, my deepest desire of being a preacher of New Life Church of Faith existing, existing is that I could possibly be used by God for you to know Jesus Christ for yourself. My whole reason for this is that you would personally Know your own true identity. Amen? So I'm always trying to, you know, seek the kingdom of God and, and the Lord. You know, I preach on Sunday. But then Monday, it, I mean, it's Monday morning. I'm praying and saying, Lord, what do you want me to say next Sunday? I'm always trying. You know, I'm not that preacher. Some preachers do it. That's their business. But they have a whole notebook of messages that they've already preached. And they just thumb through them and say, which one for the day? That's not your pastor. Now, it may seem like I'm preaching the same message over and over, and I'm not going to tell you that I'm not, but I'm not going into a notebook to find it. I'm asking God, give me something for your people. Give me something fresh for your people. Lord, don't let me warm over that old bread, and, but Lord, give me something fresh. And then after he gives me something fresh, and it's usually Monday, I'm not that... Saturday night preacher sitting there scratching my head going, Lord, what am I going to say? Monday, God's my witness. I start seeking him for something. And so he spoke to me. He said, tell my people that they absolutely need to know their true identity. And would y'all agree that it should be found in the Bible? So if you're looking and you've been looking for your true identity, but you haven't picked up this book, that's a good reason why you haven't found it. This is not to condemn anybody. I'm not judging you. I'm just trying to tell you I want to at least try to point you in the right direction. So if you take pride in saying, I don't read the Bible, that means that the devil has already got you where he wants you. Because he allows you to create your own thoughts about who you are. Okay, let me be totally honest. He gives you thoughts that's not from God. He's forever providing you with false information. 
And so the truth, wouldn't you think it's in the Bible? Who want to know your true identity? Okay, so all year we've been on this now. We're at uh, near the 10th month. This is the last Sunday for uh, September. But all year we've been over this, pull it up, uh, St. Matthews 6, 9, and 10. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, what? Thy will. Somebody say, I want to know your will. Somebody break it down a little more. Say, for me. I, I want to know my reason for being here. And you said we should pray thy will. So that means I should pray what it is that you want for me. We all agree? This simply, I want God's will. Now, this is not in this room, but other places, maybe somebody at home that don't really want to know his will. And they're good with it. They, they are, I'm good. I'm just going to bounce around till I leave. But I don't think that's the, you know, the smartest decision. Amen? And somebody say the answer is in the Bible. Okay? I, I want you to stay in the room. Say, somebody say, I can find out my true identity if I read the Bible. Can I help y'all with the assignment? Somebody say, first book. <laughs> you ain't even got to read all the other uh, 65th books, uh, 65 books. It's in the first book. Somebody say, and where? Yeah, in the first book. Somebody say, first chapter. <laughs> you want to know your true identity? It's in the first chapter in the, uh, 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 the, of the first book. And somebody say, and it's in the 26th verse. Come on, somebody say, I like this kind of help. I don't have to wonder, oh, no, why I'm here. Ain't nobody told me why I'm here. And I'd like to know, but would nobody help me? And so the Bible said, how can you hear without a preacher? So he sent this guy to tell you where you can find your true identity. Come on, lay your Bibles on your lap and clap your hands. I'm going to try to make sure I keep you all in the room today through the Holy Spirit. So in your Bibles, look in the, uh, uh, the Bible and not in your Bible because we're blessed with this new technology. We got big screens. But you should all, ooh, me and First Lady was talking about it. How many know anything about the late Frederick Casey Price? And what would he always tell his congregation when he got ready to preach? Take notes. Pull out a pen and paper. How many of y'all been to school enough that they didn't told you, if you write it down, you'll retain it better? If you write down notes, you'll remember it better. So our church is lacking in note takers. This is not a put down. I'm just going to encourage you. Take notes. Come to church. Somebody said, bring a piece of paper. Somebody said, and then this church is so wonderful that I attend. In my bulletin, there's a place for notes. Some of y'all might have never seen it. I don't know how much money we spend in y'all's tithes and offering on bulletins, and you never open it up. It's got so much good information in there, but near the back of your bulletin, it says notes. So if you have a bulletin today, you are already ready to take notes. Now, if you say, I don't want to go to church to take notes. I just want to go to church, and I want you to leave me alone, and then I'm going home. I want to hear a fast song, a slow song, a preach word, and go home. Somebody says, more to it than that. How many want to know your true identity? Okay, in Genesis, come on, pull it up. Genesis 1 and 26, you're going to see something. And it says, and God said, let us make man what? So, your true identity is that you should identify with that God made you like him. Right at the beginning, he said, when I make you, I'm going to make you in my image. So, your true identity, okay, what is God's image? Some of y'all. Anyway, let me go. I got to keep this going. Somebody say God's a spirit. 
How many can we get a little hand indication that you believe God is a spirit? Okay. So your true identity, you are a spirit. Your true identity, you are a spirit. You are not a body. You are a, because God said, now Pastor Miller, put it back up. And God said, let us make man in our own image. Right? So the first thing you need to know is that God created you like him. In his image. I got to cut around quickly, get you there, and let you know. And the Bible said, and God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so my true identity is not the physical earth suit that I live in. That's not my real image. My real image, not called Pastor Miller saying that you just read it. God said, let's make man, Adam and Eve, and let me put this in here. All of us are the descendants of Adam and Eve. So whatever God did for Adam and for Eve, he did it for all of us to come after them. I said this before. He, when he built Adam, he never went and built another man. He never went back. All of us came out of, all of us have come out of Adam, and everybody that's coming will come out of Adam. Eve came out of Adam. So, all of you in the natural know that you have uh, natural indications of your uh, natural DNA. Anybody know our first lady? She sings, and then our children sing. And then the late Mother Wade sing, did, did sing. And then uh, uh, my wife's grandpa, Sidney uh, Gilbert, he played all instruments and could sing. So it was in the DNA. Can we see that? Y'all can see this also similarity in how you look from your physical parents' DNA, right? This whole message is about true identity. So your true identity is greater than your physical identity. Your true identity is not physical similarity of your parents. Because we just read, and God said, let us make man in our image. And then we just told you that God, our creator, is a spirit. Hello? And so that means... All of us are spirit beings, and we live in a body. I've been down this. I'll keep going down it. Okay. Somebody say human being. Flip it. I am a being being human. <laughs> I am a spirit being Human. I am living in this planet as a spirit being human. Because my true identity is like my creator. I am spirit. But I'm being human. <laughs> You're not a human being spirit. You are a spirit being human because the Bible just said, let's make them in our image and in our likeness. Are you still here? Are you, are you listening? Are you receiving that my true identity is not human first? My humanness did not come before my spiritualness. Because he told us at the very beginning, my true identity is that I am a spirit. I'm going to show you in the Bible here. We are spirit like our heavenly father. Because Adam came into being after the father Created him. That was, was that the order? Okay. And Adam, I'm going to read it. Adam 
did not have any uh, spiritual existence until God breathed into his nostrils and he became a living soul. He was not able to do anything until God breathed the spirit into him. How many of y'all in this room can say that makes sense because when the spirit when the spirit is in this body, watch it. Just watch it. The spirit is in it, so it's moving. Somebody say when the spirit leaves, it takes six folks to carry it. When the spirit leaves the body, it takes six folks to carry it. Carry what? The body. Because the body has no life in it without the spirit. You are not body. You are spirit living in a body. And how do we know when the spirit leaves you? Somebody say, you stop moving. Breathing. Somebody say your eyelids, your eyelids, you, you have to close them. Somebody else has to close them. Am I right? My true identity, your true identity, stay with me. We are spirit. And we're living in a body. And we're created out of his image. Pull it back up. This is the part that make me want to shout. Somebody say, and God said, let us make man in our image after our what is God like? Shouldn't you want to know what God is like? Because whatever God is like, he said, I'm going to build you like me. So you and I are like God. We are like God. And we, there's been an extraordinary, extreme effort to make you not believe who you are. And because you don't understand who you are, you cannot manifest your true identity. So he tells us he built us like him with his imagery and his likeness. Y'all come on now. Naturally, y'all already say, she just like her mama. He just like his daddy. When you see him, you see his daddy. You see her you see her mama. And we relate to that without any question. But what's really missing us, how many of us have missed our true identity because we are not human first. We are like our creator because he told us right in the Bible who we are. He said, you are my imagery and you are like me. Woo! You better shout in this place. You better shout in this place. Somebody wants to know their true identity. Come on and give God praise. That, whoo, my God. Lee, say this. Say, I'm just like my creator. I'm created in his image and in his likeness. And somebody say, whatever God is, catch it. I'm just like him. I'm just like God, not because Pastor Miller says it, but because God said it. God said, I've made you just like me. Now, most of us are not manifesting because we don't believe our true identity. Because the true identity says, and everything that Jesus did, you do. Now, the only reason you don't do it and I don't do it is because we don't believe in our true identity. We don't really believe we are the sons of God. That means daughters of God. It means absolutely you and I, our true identity is that we are created in his image and in his likeness. And when you believe it, you will manifest. I'm challenging you. I've been on it all this last week. Somebody said meditate on Genesis 1, 26 through 28 because the Bible said uh, faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God 
And Joshua was Moses' replacement. And the Bible said that the Bible instructed Joshua, meditate on my word day and night. And he said, just like I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Somebody said, I'm just like Jesus because I was built just like Jesus. Jesus, did he or did he not show us our true identity? Jesus showed us our true identity. Please don't sit in this room and go to sleep on me. Please don't take your mind out of this room and ignore that the Lord is talking to people in this room who don't know your true identity. This is not a fill-in-the-blank message. This is a message for God to speak to you through his servant so you will begin to manifest. Well, you can't manifest if you don't know your true identity. If you don't really believe you just like God, if you don't believe you just like Jesus, if you don't believe he made you in his imagery and that he made you in his likeness, then you will live a morally, excuse me, you will live as a mortal. You will live as something limited. You will live as if you can't do what he said you can do. He said you can do how many things? He said that you are more than a conqueror. He said, I've redeemed you from the curse of the law. I've set you in my own righteousness. Your true identity is that you are not just mortal, but you are immortality. And God is a spirit, and God don't die, so you don't die. Come on here. You just leave this body and go into eternity. Because you just like God. I said, God said, you just like me. I wish somebody wake up in this room and begin to believe that you are not just mortal. You're not limited. You are not weak. You are not scary. You are not broke. You are not if you believe that, then that means you don't know your true identity. And it's been a great effort ever since you got here for you to believe what you're not. How many in this room can testify when you start wanting to do something different than everybody else, they start shooting you down? What did you say you want to do? You can't do that. Have you really counted up how much that's going to cost you? I'm going to be praying for you. And that praying for you means I know you're going to fail. So I'm going to be there to pick you up when you, when you fall. Them words is from somebody who don't know their own identity. Those words comes from the demonic council. Those words are only coming to you so you don't come to the revelation that you are created in his image and in his likeness. And somebody say, what you do, daddy? You made me just like you. <sighs> Y'all, come on. When the lions couldn't eat them, it was because in Genesis it says, I gave Adam dominion over the beast, over the fowl. Come on, somebody. Over everything that moveth upon the face of the earth. Your true, hey, your true identity. Don't nothing move without your permission. Don't nothing have any say so without you approving it. Now, Satan is a criminal, and that means, oh, my God. And God said, let us make man in our image and, and likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Come on, y'all, read. Come on, read it. And over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over what part? What part? What part? Danville, Illinois, where I'm at. That means that wherever I'm at, I have dominion over my surroundings. Come on here. Over all the earth and over what? Everything. 
every mosquito, every dog, every cat, every rat, everything that move upon the face of the earth, my true identity says I have dominion. Somebody say I have authority. Now you in the room, don't even act like you all into this message because it's making you come out of your your scary place. And he told us in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. And I gave us, God said, I gave man, Adam, all the offspring is the same legal authority over this planet. Now what happened at the crucifixion, y'all didn't heard it over and over again, Jesus delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. We are no longer under the authority of Satan. We all have been given back our legal right to reign and to rule. The very beginning, what he told Eve and Adam, he now has given it back through Christ. What is your true identity? We are, I, I'm just re- going through all my scriptures, but I'm going to try to, you know, let you see them for yourself at the end, but I, I got to keep moving. All of us were, <laughs> all of us are the sons of God. All of our true identity, our father is the one that built everything, created everything. And this is good. Somebody says, and I have his DNA. Y'all know it. Come on, y'all know it. Jesus said, what I do, you can do, right? And we said, go on, Jesus. Quit playing. Because Jesus, he said, what I do, you shall do. And then you're going to do something greater than what I did. And if you don't know your true identity, you don't believe you can do what he said you can do. You happy just being human. When are you going to start being spirit? Manifesting through this human body. Mm -hmm. The message is that the church will begin to manifest our true identity. Everything in this world is not given to you to make you defeat it. Satan has made us think we are bound and we're not. Christ has already delivered us. My true identity, and I went to my brother-in-law who got promoted uh, to the head bishop over the fifth jurisdiction of the state of Illinois, and we were at his inauguration and celebration on Saturday. And the guest speaker said, his subject was, keep on climbing. Noah had to go today, so I got to be my own Hammond. Keep on climbing. Come on here. Keep on moving. You ain't done yet. That's what they were telling Bishop Perry. Yes, you didn't reach this level. Somebody said, but keep on climbing. Somebody said there's some more that you haven't accomplished yet. And I like that preacher. I like his his theme and what he was saying. But I kept saying, I don't climb. I move. What do you mean, Pastor Miller? Jesus says, if you speak to the mountain and tell it to be uprooted and to go into the sea, it shall obey you. Don't tell me we know our true identity. We sit here afraid of just about everything. Don't get all religious with me. Just be honest. Do I really know my true identity? If I really know it, then I am a mountain mover. If I really know my true identity, I don't get afraid of hurricanes. Why? Because Jesus, I'm going to show you boys who you are, got up, stood up on the barrels of the ship, and he spoke to the wind and the rain, and he said, peace be still. And they said, what kind of man is this? And he was letting them know, oh, ye of little faith. I pray against hurricanes. Come on. I pray against severe weather patterns because I believe my identity says I have that authority to do so. Amen. 
Not because I said it. The Bible said it. That greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Y'all getting got quiet on me. Come on and shout. Come on. Open up your mouth. If you got a mouth, let me know you're not asleep. Don't let me think that you in church today and you really didn't come to find out about your true identity. You better shake the devil off. Come on here. Shake off sickness. Come on here. Shake off, oh my God, sleepiness. Shake off tiredness. Somebody say, I'm going to get this today. I'm going to get this today. My power is not in my physical ability. My real power, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I am spirit, you are spirit, and we have power over all the physical elements. Oh, God. Come on, everybody say, Lord, help me. Come on, y'all, please help yourself today. Lay hands on yourself. Because I got people, when I go out to pray for folks, they don't know me. They say, oh, you ain't praying for me. <laughs> I don't know you. You know, you know, so many folks, you know, just so afraid because they think I'm a hoodoo. Yeah, they, they think I'm going to make them grow another head. So they, they run from me. No, you ain't praying for me. And then that oil, that oil really scared. What is, what is that? They think I done went in the hoodoo room. I'm going to... So they won't let me pray for them. And God know all I want them to do is get a blessing. Because that's how I pray. I say, Lord, bless them. Whew. Lord, bless them. My great, me, my grandfather who passed on said, uh, when he prayed, he said, Lord, bless them with the need they stand most in need of. That's how I'm praying. I don't know what they need, but Lord, bless them with the need that they stand most in need of. That's why I'm praying. But some people won't pray or let you pray because they say, don't let nobody lay hands on you suddenly. And how many know that that's because if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you can get prayed over by a demon. But somebody say, if you understand, hallelujah, the discernment of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let me get back on the mess. Put your hand on your head. Since you don't trust nobody else, can you pray for yourself? Can you at least have faith for your own self? Say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me who I am. What is my true identity? Come on, give God praise for it. Hallelujah. Come on. He said, when you pray, believe you receive it. Come on, somebody say, I receive it. The revelation of my true identity. I'm not just mortal, but I am spirit having a human experience. Hallelujah. Come on, we got to get back up here because my time is running out and I want to try to not work all of these technical people and then I don't bring the scriptures up. I want to at least get it on the screen for everybody. Also, somebody say in your bulletin is the scriptures. Duh. Everything we can do to help you. But if you got, somebody said, when I go home, I got to read it myself. Somebody say on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I got to read Genesis 1. Uh, 26 and 28 and somebody say meditate because they said if I meditate then it'll come alive he said faith will come right faith will come but I got to read it and I got to meditate on it so I ignore reading it and meditating on it and I sit in church for 40 years and say I don't know why I'm here people all the time blaming me because they don't have uh, direction they don't know their calling. As if I hold the answer. And so the pastor, he's not really that good of a teacher, and, and he really doesn't, you know, have enough structure. Somebody said, let everybody work out their own soul salvation with fear and truth. Do you have a Bible in your house more than for decoration? Don't get offended. Not just, you know me. I'm just always trying to push you. I'm not trying to dog you. I'm trying to tell you what good is to have the, the absolute truth in your house and you don't read it. You don't have no desire to read it. You have no appetite to read it. You're so arrogant. I read it before. What did you find out? Nothing. Still don't know who you are. Somebody said you'll learn who you are. 
when you read it, and then you read it, and then you read it, and then you read it again, and then you read it again. Somebody say, I'm reading it because I'm looking for something. Don't just read it to say, I read it. Looking for God to reveal your true identity. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he, him, how many, male and female, come on, every woman shout glory, created he, them. Adam ain't holding your life, you holding your life. You have, you've got every right to know God for yourself. I've been getting this in the last few months. Many women do not attend church because their husband said, you obey me. Well, my Bible said, let every man be a liar and God be the truth. What is he talking about? God told me to worship him. God told me not to forsake the assembly of myself together with other believers. God told me to honor him with my body. Come on now. God told me not to return evil for evil. God told me not to sell unrighteous things to anybody. God told me not to abuse my temple. God, I don't care what you say, Bubba. And I'm not talking about us getting divorces in here. I'm talking about wisdom. The lady at the banner location just tearing at the altar today because she said, I'm leaving him, but I don't want to leave him because I love him, but he won't stop abusing me. And she didn't say physically. She said mentally. You got more than one way of being abused. But if you know, somebody said, I know my identity. I'm a child of God. I don't have to worry about anybody. Because God says, whew, he'll fight my battles. Anybody read it? He said, if I hold my peace, and I kept telling that little lady today, I said, when you go home, do this. I said, when you go home. Why? Because you can't argue along by yourself. Oh, y'all didn't like that one. No, I, I think we need to talk it out. We, we need to talk it out. And you ain't listening to her, and she ain't listening to you. You just talking. Making each other more mad and more confused. Why would he tell us and teach us, hold your peace? It's better to be quiet. It's better. Even when you come in here, everybody want to be a preacher. He said, it's better to go to the house of the Lord and be quiet than it is to speak. You got so much to say. Everybody know you don't know nothing because you open your mouth. You're looking all religious and deep and then you open your mouth. And they say, he ain't got nothing. She ain't got nothing. Truth. Somebody said, you got to know your true identity. Come on, y'all, I got to finish. Somebody said, I don't need to prove to humans. I don't need to tell humans who I am. Somebody said, let your light shine. They're going to see who you are. This is good. Somebody said, and the world will not accept you when you know your true identity. When you know your true identity, they can't get you to do what they're doing because you know that my true identity says I am not that person. And when people want you to follow them and you refuse, then they mad. You were never created to follow humans. We were created to follow our creator. My true identity is for everybody to see God in me, through me. Hallelujah. Come on, we got to go. I'm sorry, but we got to go. I ain't really sorry, but we got to go. So I, I did this already at 9 o'clock, and I, I can do this all day. And some of y'all that stick around at the end of the service, I'll preach it to you again in 10 seconds flat. Like, you wasn't even here. You're like, I just heard what you said. And there you go again. Jeremiah says like fire. 
shut up in my bones. Come on in this room right now and say, Lord, thank you for creating me in your image and in your likeness. Somebody say, nothing is impossible to me because there's nothing impossible to my creator. And he said, I built you just like me. So that means whatever I do, you can do. Really quick, really quick. Come on, give me another scripture. I don't know where we got. And, and everybody read that. Wait a minute. Who, who blessed him? Who? So tell me why you scared of folk. Why are you scared of the devil? Y'all quiet now. Because you don't know your true identity. If you know your true identity, when God bless you, can't nobody curse you. And when he built Adam and Eve, he blessed them. Come on, shout in this place. Come on right now, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Come on, get him up right now, Fred and Hammond. We're blessed in the city, and we're blessed in the field, and we're blessed when we come and when we go. Somebody say, everywhere I go. Somebody know your true identity. You tell the devil, when I come on grounds, lay down. Every devil worshiper, every witch, every warlock, nothing they have in their arsenal will work against me. Somebody say, the Bible says, behold, I've given unto thee power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing. Nothing shall be able to hurt me because God from the beginning said your true identity is that you and I are blessed. And God said, and I blessed them. And God said unto them, be what? And multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. That subdue it, somebody said, make it do what you tell it to do. Keep going over this all these years. Somebody said, sit down, dog. Don't bark. Shake my hand with your paw. Come here, eagle. Land on my arm. Come here, flipper. getting on your back and I want you to ride me across that little pool and bring me back. <whistles> Mr. Ed, I'm getting on your back. And you better not buck. Now ride me like you got some sense. Everything is under your dominion. One person in the way in the back, they heard me. So I know all y'all on the front heard me, but there's only a person way in the back gave y'all away. Oh, God. Okay. I heard you, Sister Carter. She said, I'm just soaking it in, Pastor. I'm just listening. So this week, when you go out and, and do that professional job of being a nurse practitioner, you have dominion over every patient. And you have somebody say, I'm just like God. I diagnose your case. <laughs> I can tell you right now what you're doing wrong. Now, you like my daughter Latoya. Y'all tell them all the time, and they walk away talking about that nurse don't know what she's talking about. That doctor don't know what she's talking about. I can eat all the Twinkies I want. All right, keep on eating them. I'm giving me all these prescriptions. I ain't got time to be taking medicine. I'm just push that stuff on the side. Uh-oh, wait, wait, whoop, boop. We don't like people telling us what to do, even though we ain't got enough sense to do what's right ourselves. And we get mad at the preacher. Children get mad at their parents. People get mad at the school teacher who know algebra, and you don't even know how to count to three yet. Tip, tip, run, tip. You can't read that, but no. You go to school to learn. Somebody say, he created us in his imagery. 
and in his likeness. And he gave us dominion over everything. Somebody help me preach, say, but not over each other. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Y'all didn't read that in there. He never said over each other. He said over the beast and the fish and all that other stuff. But what Satan did at the very beginning, he put Adam and Eve against each other. Am I right? Right now, we got all these uh, humans uh, killing each other all over the world. Come on. We got all this uh, gang rivalry craziness going on. Come on. Husbands against wives, wives against husbands. And God said, that is not what I told you to do. I told you to take dominion and authority over everything that's against me. That ain't against one another. But somebody said, our warfare is not with flesh and blood, but it's with principalities and powers and the rulers of darkness. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus. If you know your true identity, say it with authority. In the name of Jesus, I give no permission to any unclean spirit. In the name of Jesus, I give you no legal authority over my body, over my life, over everything that God has given to me. I give you no physical habitation. I give you nowhere to reign or to rule. I give you no air to breathe, no water to, nothing. Because my true identity, God created me to subdue it. Somebody said, make it do what it do. How many of y'all in this room have a place when you, uh, you know, at your uh, point that says, you know what? It's getting ready to go down now. Anybody ever got to that point? You know, I do this occasionally. Get your bandana back on. You didn't pull me out of being mother so-and-so. I'm going back to. May West. Some of y'all too young. Y'all don't know nothing. May West wasn't nothing to play with back in the cowboy days. May West. She was a gunslinger. She, 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 she. So we're not talking about physical. I'm trying to stay spiritual. Somebody says, when I pray, somebody say, when I pray, the devil's in trouble. Somebody say, more than I could ever do to you, say to you physically, when I pray, that's when he's afraid. Somebody say, every one of us that are pray against him today, he's afraid. And he trembles at the name of Jesus. Okay, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. We ain't got but two or three minutes before 1.30 on the clock. Everybody on your feet. And we're going to read the rest of these really quick just because we should. Okay. Okay, y'all look up this way. Black church got a bad name. Black church has got a bad name. And the reason why black church has got a bad name, they say it's not righteous for us to be in church over an hour. Yeah. The devil is so slick, he has told the church people, if you don't want to be ignorant, don't go to a church that stays in past 1 o'clock. I dare you to go home and watch ESPN for four hours a night. I dare you to get on Facebook for two or three hours. I dare you. So it's a lie in spirit. Come on, somebody, let's do what they do in heaven. Hallelujah! 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 Come on, praise him. Hallelujah! Come on and praise him. Hallelujah! Open up your mouth. Hallelujah! 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 We ain't going nowhere but home in the next few minutes to do nothing. But the pressure that I get from being a pastor is you guys want to go home. You want to leave here. Enough of this preaching. Enough of it. So I'm going to take the liberty of a few more minutes. Y'all already on your feet, and I'm talking about a short few more minutes. And look at your, your big screens. And it said, the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became what? And I went ahead of myself, and I showed you that when the breath go out, the body can't do nothing. But when the spirit of the Lord is in it, independently, I don't care what your physical size, you can move it. Because it ain't you, it's the spirit in you. Come on, everybody read. 
How many know if you understand your true identity, can't nobody <laughs> convince you to do what is not involved with your true identity? I don't care what everybody else is doing. Somebody says, I know my true identity, and God never created me to be a streetwalker. Uh-huh, that's what my late father-in-law used to say about his daughters. He said, I didn't create none of y'all to be streetwalkers. Let me help y'all, a prostitute. That's what he was saying. And none of y'all supposed to be a prostitute. I didn't, I didn't create y'all to be a prostitute. When you know your true identity, you won't sell your body. When you understand your true identity, you will not ingest hell, uh, 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 drugs, and alcohol. You won't inhale that kind of stuff. If you know your true identity, you don't have to get offended at this. You can say, well, there ain't nothing wrong with that. That's because you don't know your true identity. You're mad right now if I'm preaching against some area that you are bound by because if you know your true identity, can nothing overrule you. You have been given dominion over everything. So quit claiming I got to do this. No, you don't. You don't know your true identity. Your true identity is greater than your ancestral uh, DNA. Your true identity is that you and I are just like God. Somebody said, we're the most powerful beings. But if you ain't ready to give up these streets, you ain't ready to give up this world, you want this preaching to be over. But my assignment is try to get somebody to accept Christ so you can discover how many in here can testify. It was until I gave my life to Christ, I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. I was just bumping around from place to place, from man to woman, to drinking, to drugging, to acting a fool, getting another degree and another degree, but I never was satisfied. Danville is not a terrible place. It's a terrible place if you don't know your true identity. Because I live every day here without the crazy that's going on all around me. Because I ain't where I'm supposed to be, so I don't go there. I don't run with folks that I know that don't accept their true identity. I ain't nothing special, but I'm so grateful that God has helped me with my cray-cray, with my stupid stuff, with believing what I can't do. And God already told me what I can do. Can I get a witness? What do we got left, y'all? We got to go. Read. Come on, get us another one. When you know. Somebody say, I'm a child of God. Say that all week. Say, I'm a child of God. Say it all week. I'm a child of God. Say it all week. I'm created in your image and in your likeness. Say it all week, you've given me authority. You've given me dominion. Say it all week, I'm more than a conqueror. Say it, I'm healed from all diseases. Say it, because he said it, 103. He said, I healed you from all diseases. I've forgiven you of all your sins. Say it, I'm forgiven of all my sins. Come on, put this on the front. Lord, I thank you that you have forgiven me of all my iniquities, and you have healed me from all diseases. I'm a son of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. You understand? Religious people had Jesus assassinated. Religious people said, give us Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Don't let nobody that sits around church make you think that God is telling them to hurt you. God ain't telling them that. Satan is. If anybody lying on you, misrepresenting you, and all of that, that ain't God. But it can be false preachers, false prophets, all kind of folks with nice church clothes on, but that don't mean that they love you. Somebody should read your Bible. Somebody should read your Bible. Would you please help me preach? Say, read your Bible. Somebody say, and read your Bible. Meditate this week. 
Everybody this week meditate on Genesis 1, 26 through 28. You got these scriptures I've read today. Read all of them this week. Meditate on them. Is there anybody want to know your true identity? Anybody want more revelation on who you really are? Is that the last scriptures that I have for you guys? Is there something else? We're going to let them go. Beloved, what? And it do not yet appear what we shall be, but what? But we will know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Hallelujah. Your true identity is that you are a spirit. I'm a spirit. We are spirit. And the scripture says, and God is a what? And they that what? Must worship him how? In spirit and in truth. Somebody said, quit faking it. Quit pretending. Your true identity makes you want to worship. I try, you know, and I, I, Sister Kelly and, and, and Sister Miller and all the rest of them, they, they, they only stop because I get up. They are worshipers. They're, they're worshiping. They're, they're in their moment. And a lot of uh, uh, ministers of music, they don't like me because I cut off their worship. And they just really don't want to hear even, you know, preaching. They just want to worship because that's their anointing. Come on, y'all. And I shouldn't be mad at them because they don't want to come down. I should understand. And we'll have to go in the back after service. Not, not like that. None of that. All of us should want to just worship. All of us should want to praise him for hours and hours and hours. For the earnest expectation, expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of what? Come on, somebody say manifest. You can't manifest your true identity if you don't know what it is. And this message has just wore you out today. Because all I keep saying, you must know your true identity. You don't want anybody taking you down the wrong road, am I right? But if you know your true identity, God told me, I'm talking about all of us in here, not to fornicate. That My true identity, I don't fornicate. My true identity, I don't drink and I don't drug and, and I don't care how much of this homosexual lifestyle is going on. I know my true identity. He didn't build me that way. I don't care. He didn't tell me to cuss folks out because I get mad. He told me to hold my peace. My true identity, I'm not a cusser. I'm not a drinker and a drugger and a smoker. Listen, don't nobody get mad. I did all of those things. Somebody said, but when you know better, then you do better. I know better now. So I'm not dogging you. I'm not 100%. I'm doing the best I can. And all I'm telling you, the more I understand my true identity, the more I want to manifest. But it's now made manifest by the appearing of the Savior, Jesus Christ. <sighs> okay, really quickly. Ministers come. And everybody else come to the altar. Come to the altar for whatever you want to come for. Salvation, rededication, baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need special prayer. You want to be a member. I don't know. Whatever it is, we're coming quickly because people want to leave. And everybody have a right to leave. I just want you to stay another five minutes while we pray over some people, possibly, and, and some folks receive a refreshing, whatever. Really quick. Really quick. If you're coming, you're coming now. Salvation, rededication, baptism of the Holy Ghost, special prayer request. Uh, you want to be a member here? I don't know. Whatever it is, you need to come quickly. You don't need to wait till next Sunday. You need to come quickly. Is there anybody coming? I don't want to hold you unnecessarily. I see one person at the altar. There's two other ministers. If you want some special prayer, you want to come to Christ, you want to rededicate, you want the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you got a prayer request, you got something you need prayer, and the ministers will pray with you about it. If you're coming, you're coming now. You're not coming later. You're coming now. I already told you. People you're the king.